Up until now, we've been illustrating ways to create and use observables by writing a class that implements either the iObservable interface or the iObserver. All of that, give or take, is still a bit of typing. The easiest way to get started with some code that creates an observable and uses it without typing a lot of code is to use a class named subject of t. This class is provided by the Rx framework. A subject is a class that implements both the iObservable of t interface and the iObserver interface. A single class that implements both. To use it, we'll create an instance of the subject of t class Since it implements the iObservable of t already, we could just subscribe to it. We'll do that by calling the subscribe method and passing it the address of the console.writeLine method for its value handler. But you might think, what are we subscribing to? Where are the values going to come from? From the subject itself. Since it is an observable, it must produce values, and each time it does, it must call on next to notify its observers. Well, then who are the observers, you would ask? Once again, it is the subject itself. Since the subject of t also implements the iObserver of t interface, we should just call on next on the subject itself. Let's do that. And then, when we do not want to listen any more to the values, we'll just call dispose on the active subscription. Now, any more on next calls after this that the subject produces will not be received by the value handler. Let's run this bit of code. You'll notice that the value 3, which was produced after the subscription was disposed of, has not been received by the observer part of the subject. Now, when I saw this example for the first time, I thought exactly what you must be thinking right now. That all of this seems pretty pointless. I mean, what's the use of doing this? Exactly. There isn't any. This is a contrived example only to illustrate the capabilities of a subject of T. Generally, the subject is a good class to work with just to get your feet wet with Rx because it involves the least bit of typing effort, allowing you to quickly create an observable and subscribe to it. Beyond that, it can also be used in production code, but I would advise you to try and avoid using it. I'll discuss the reasons in a bit. So, a subject of T is a nice class to use for demos and for teaching and learning Rx. But you can also use it beyond just that. One good use of a subject of T is to make it act like a multicast or a broadcast service that relays its values to many observers, like a mediator. Since a subject is both an observable and an observer, it may subscribe to one observable, or even more than one, and then propagate the values it receives from those observables to its many subscribers. Let's do an example of that. In this example, I'll create an instance of a subject of T and have it subscribe to an observable. The way I'll create the observable is by converting an I enumerable of T into an I observable of T by using the to observable extension method on the I enumerable of T. This method comes with the Rx framework and it resides in the system.reactive.link namespace. That'll mean that the subject itself subscribes to or gets its values from this i enumerable of strings. Next, I'll create three subscriptions to the subject. One will print to the console window the second to the output window, and the third will also print to the console window, but with a half a second gap each time. Then, I'll ask the user to dispose all active subscriptions by pressing any key. 
Let's run this. Whoa, what just happened? Running this didn't produce any output at all. Why could that be? Remember, when you create an observable, nothing happens. In that, no value is produced then. And creating an observable is like creating a query that can potentially be run when the subscribe method is called. It is only when the subscribe method is called that the values are received by an observer. In our example, we created an observable of strings from the string array. And when we did that, nothing happened. But as soon as our subject subscribes to the string observable, it starts to receive all the values. And as it does receive the values, it starts to propagate them to its subscribers immediately upon receiving each value. And since this is a very small amount of data, all of this happens so quickly even before the other subscribers get a chance to subscribe to the subject. So by the time these three subscribers or observers or these three methods have had a chance to subscribe to our subject, our subject has already received all its values and the source observable has already been completed. Now we can change that if we moved these three subscriptions to our subject before we subscribe our subject to the observable strings. That way we'll be telling our subject, hey, the three of us are ready now to receive values whenever you have them. Now we can have the subject subscribe to the source observable of strings. And if we run this code with these changes now, all goes well. Our three observers receive all the values from the subject. This way, the subject acts like a relay or a multicast block that can take values from a given observable or many observables and broadcast them or multicast them to multiple subscribers. There are three subtypes of subjects provided by Rx, which I encourage you to look up on your own. You may use a subject to relay values from more than one observable also to its subscribers. In the source code I've included for you, you will find an example to do that in the four steps using subject solution. Besides this, in the same solution, you'll also find how exceptions work when dealing with subjects. In other demos with the code I've included, you'll find how to use a subject as a backing field for a publicly exposed property. This is a use case for a subject in production code. You can use it to publicly expose an iObservable as a property and have its backing field be a subject. There's more than one example in the demos that illustrates this. But generally, in production code, you should try avoiding the use of a subject. Almost every time, anything you're trying to do can be done with methods other than those which involve using a subject. A subject is not really a great choice for the following reasons. 1. It violates the single responsibility principle, which says that everything must do just one and only one thing. A subject means and does two things. This means if you passed a subject around to a piece of code that was meant only to subscribe to the subject, that code could potentially do other things as well. That is, Miscreant code could potentially call on next to the subject and inject values and raise notifications to existing observers. Likewise, if you passed a subject to a producer of values, so it may have subscribed the subject to itself, a miscreant producer may attach one or more of its own unintended observers to the subject. 2. A subject maintains an internal list of observers which it needs to propagate events to. This means you have an observable that maintains state. Now, even though the state is immutable in the case of a subject, maintaining state can lead to unhappy things. 3. Since a subject is also a producer, it defers the responsibility of propagating errors gracefully to its observers on the producer. Finally, a subject isn't in the good graces of the Rx team even, and so their commitment to keeping it fit and healthy isn't a top item on their long-term agenda either. 
This means using subjects in your production code could mean that your code could potentially suffer from performance problems in the future versions of Rx. When I talk about hot and cold observables, I'll bring up subjects again.